The origins of wearing your heart on your sleeve. All right, here we go. It was during the Roman Empire that St. Valentine is said to have left a note to his jailer's daughter. Oh, Jesus, how much was she trying to fucking piss off her dad by fucking one of the inmates, huh? From your Valentine, uh, before his execution on February 14th. Today, thanks to St. Valentine, cards expressing one's heartfelt emotions, a.k.a. Valentine's, are given to that special someone. To defer to the classic idiom, it's a day to wear your heart on your sleeve. Was there an explanation in there? You started with the story and then you just deferred, which completely fucked me up. We use the phrase casually to mean exposing our true emotions, making ourselves vulnerable and letting it all hang out. The phrase is so pervasive that from Ringo Starr to Eminem to Carrie Underwood, those words have turned into... Dude, are you trying to stretch this out any longer? This could have been one fucking paragraph. Wearing your heart on a sleeve. Oh, here we go. But what kind of sleeve? And why on a sleeve? I swear to God, I'm reading the copy. And not pants or legs and around your neck, there's no clear answer. You fucking asshole. But many, you fucking dick, that's why you were stretching it out. Because if you just wrote, I don't know, I wouldn't have clicked on your site. <sighs> All right, we've got to see it through, people. I'm sorry. There's no clear answer, but many legends attempt to, to get at the heart of the matter. Now you're going to go into a pun after you tell me, this is such a fucking train wreck, I can't stop. It may explain the sorts of the saying. The three most popular are, in the Middle Ages... Emperor Claudius II believed unattached men made better soldiers, so he declared marriage illegal. As a concession, he encouraged temporary coupling. Once a year during a Roman festival honoring Juno, men drew names to determine who would be their lady friend for the coming year. Once established, the man would wear a name on his sleeve for the rest of the festival. Jesus Christ, did the woman have any say? No, she's just a common hua. Janet Rossi is a hua. Uh, around that same time, it's speculated when a knight performed in a jousting match in the king's court, he dedicated his performance to a woman of the court by tying something of hers like a handkerchief around his arm. He let the court know the match would defend the honor of that woman. Or we can credit Shakespeare, and I'm not reading this Shakespeare. Oh, you want to hear me read Shakespeare? Where may, okay. I ago. It is sure as you are Rod Ro Ro Roderick. Roderigo, were I the more, I would be, I would not be I ago. Well, I'm glad you cleared that up, Billy. This is right here why I flunked all this shit. And following him, I follow but my, ah, dude, fuck you. Fuck you. All right, Jesus Christ. Why don't you, Jesus fucking Christ. That, you know how depressing that was? That fucking attempt right there. It's amazing. It's amazing I succeed in anything, isn't it? Um, Oh, by the way, they were doing this 20-year retrospective on o the O.J. Simpson trial. It was funny. And they said the exact same shit that they said 20 years ago, how polarizing it was and how white people saw it one way and how black people saw it another way. Now, obviously, I'm not going to be dumb enough to try to speak for black people here. I wouldn't do that. But I'll tell you what, there was plenty of black people on that show speaking for white people. And, you know, I'm not saying they were 100 percent wrong, but they were never speaking for all the sports fans out there who happen to be white like me. The whole trial, when I was watching that, I was never thinking, oh, that son of a bitch black guy killed that pure blonde white woman. I never thought that shit. The entire trial, I thought the exact same thing. Anytime I would turn it on, I would think the exact same thing. I would be like, that is fucking O.J. Simpson. O.J. Simpson is sitting behind that table on trial for a double murder. I grew up watching that guy. You know when he did the Hertz commercials? I was just, I was like five or six years old. And that old lady, go, OJ, go, right? When he would fucking jump over the luggage. I wasn't old enough to know that a black guy starring in a fucking commercial, like that was groundbreaking. I didn't. I just knew that that guy was fucking awesome. He had a cool nickname. My first pack of football cards I got, Cleo, for the love of fucking Christ, can you lay down, buddy? All right, get up here. Get up here. There you go, lay down. See, I give in. I give in because you're so cute. Anyways, back to OJ. <laughs> um, my first pack of football cards that I got, he was right on top. Right on fucking top. I think the gum was in the back, so it didn't ruin it. And um, that was like my prized possession. And I remember I was so young when he got traded to the 49ers. 
and I got that Topps football card that me and my brothers used to call side year because everything was on when we used to trade. Like what year? Flag year, side year, football year, um, rather than the years. Um, I thought it was going to be worth money because he was on a different team. Like, wow, this is O.J. Simpson's on the 49ers. This is going to be worth money because people, you know, I didn't realize that the rookie card. I was young. I was stupid. And then I watched his fucking movies, The Naked Gun. I watched him on Monday Night Football when he was with Joe Namath. And he would be like, you know what? I would have done right there. I would have cut back. He used to say what he would do. And then Joe Namath would always say the same thing. That was a really nice play. That play. He used to always say that shit. And it was a terrible year for Monday Night Football, but whatever. I just remember hearing shit that Bob Costas and Al Michaels, you know, weren't in contact with them anymore. I just, it was the first time I really remember watching somebody have it all and then fucking lose it all. And it was always, that's how I always looked at him. OJ Simpsons, 2003 fucking yards in a season, Heisman Trophy winner, star of the Naked Gun 1 and 2, and that fucking movie where he was the astronaut, right? And the thing goes bad, and then they try to kill him. That's who the fuck he was. And there he was just sitting there on trial. I couldn't fucking believe it. So, the next time they do one of those documentaries, they got to have a dope like me in there. Not going like, you know, in the history of the justice system, black people will always see the white person get up. To me, it was, it was fucking, it was O.J. Simpson. All right? For you youngsters out there, just to know, who, who's your guy? You know what I mean? Is there even a guy like that anymore? I don't know. I can't relate to it anymore because every time I look at an athlete now, it's just somebody half my fucking age living a dream that never happened to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's right, fucking ridiculous. All right, where the fuck are we here? Let me get to let me get to some of the reads for the week here, and then I'm gonna go work out because I go to the gym every day. Um, I'm maintaining, guys. I put on a few, then I take it off. Put on a few, take it off, but I'm still in my fight and fucking weight. Um, which I don't even know what the fuck it is anymore, which is good because I got acting work tomorrow. So maybe I'll look sexy and maybe I'll get some more work out of it. I don't know. Where the fuck is... Oh, did I close the wrong one? Yeah, oh, Jesus. Can this be like a new segment on the fucking podcast where Bill tries to find the fucking window that he opened and everything was fine and he had it all set up and then he fucks it up when he's on live? All right, content content hey if you guys want to email the podcast uh bill at the mm podcast.com all right DraftKings inside insider explanation all right because i didn't get it last week i didn't understand why it was such a big fucking deal that some people from DraftKings won 300 grand at FanDuel, and they were saying that they had inside information and so and i was like what are you what are you friends well what are you, what are you friends with a player <laughs> Um, so, Bill, not trying to be a cunt here, just explaining why that guy from DraftKings, what he did was considered insider information and made money. Basically, he had access to the percentage of ownership of the players. For example, he knew that 58% of people were starting Brady, 13% were starting Russell Wilson, 80% start, uh, starting Julio Jones, etc. Obviously, these are not the real percentages. It's just an example. Well, even if they were, I wouldn't be able to figure out the math. So... Thank you for giving me round numbers. Anyways, he and, and uh, only others at DraftKings had that information, not anyone else, the general, meaning the general public, um, that were playing in those games. The numbers are released after the lineups are locked, but he had them beforehand. Okay, so I understand that he had information, but I don't understand what you do with the information because I don't play fantasy football or do this shit. So hopefully you'll break it down a little more. He and the uh, um, player percentage owned is potentially the biggest factor when picking players why this is why is this significant dude please don't ask the questions just fucking give me the answers why i don't know well the only way to actually make money and get ahead of other players is if you had different people starting than them right if 80 percent of the people are starting julio jones and you have him you won't get ahead of people you'll be even with them yeah but if julio has a bigger day you're going to be fucked so what this cunt did was look at the players with the lowest percentage owned that also had the highest potential oh, to have big games. He used this insider information he had at DraftKings to play in big money tournaments at FanDuel. Also, he won big money almost every day playing MLB Fantasy. It's not out of the question to think he could have had information from Shark. His buddies are the highest bidder. Oh, well, that's very interesting. That's really fascinating. That's going to be a great movie, right? That's going to be one of those Facebook movies. 
you know, some awkward guy is going to play the awkward guy that started it. No cool. Does anybody cool who's fucking, you know, can hold up their end of a conversation ever start anything? It's like a really introverted thing, this computer stuff. It's amazing. They can't talk to people, yet what they make speaks to so many. Wow. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> There must have been a collective. Oh, Jesus, on that one. All right, NFL Pink. Dear Billy Schram, uh, if a guy like Phil Sims, Jim Nance, or Chris Collins were spoke out about extortion involved in the breast cancer awareness pink campaign, would they lose their job? Of course, if they said it's stupid, they'd just lose their job. But if they articulated the problem with parading survivors on the field at the beginning of the game, like during the New England-Dallas game, uh, while only giving pennies on the dollars to the actual cause, would they come under fire or be praised? Thanks. I think I've answered all of those questions. Um, look, I mean, the NFL is always going to sell jerseys. So they make some pink ones, and the pink ones they give 8%, evidently, allegedly, to uh, the cancer people, uh, the awareness people, and then they give 8% of that 8%. I don't know how it fucking works. I mean, it's better than nothing. Yeah, I mean, I think the the way they presented it, like a portion of the proceeds, fans, all we hear is like, oh, I buy this jersey, and then they give all this money. You know, I get a jersey. It's not the color I wanted, but it, it's going to help out people that are suffering. Um, so yeah, it's not it's not the most transparent advertising. Who gives a fuck, right? They don't give a shit. They didn't give a shit when Ray Rice fucking knocked out his fiance. They only gave him two fucking games. And they didn't give a fuck until the video came out. Then they suspended him forever. They didn't give a fuck. Why? It's because Ray Rice fucking was making him a bunch of money. That's like, you know, that, yeah, they call it the Brady rule about not hitting low and hitting the quarterback late. It's not the Brady rule. It's the fucking money rule. They don't give a fuck about Tom Brady. Tom Brady makes some money. And if Tom Brady's not playing, they lose money. So they're like, we got to protect that motherfucker. Not because Tom has any sort of influence. Although he is pretty dreamy to look at. Uh, lifeguard. Bill, I'm a lifeguard and a strong swimmer. I was at the beach last week and I noticed a body go under. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, dude. That's one of the scariest fucking... That's one of my biggest fears in life. The undertow was bad that day and I had a bad feeling, so I swam to where I thought someone went under. I pulled up an 11-year-old kid. He had water in his lungs and was struggling. Dude, this better be true. because I, Or you better go into writing because I'm riveted right now. I didn't need to give him, give full on CPR, but I did have to administer the proper response to get him to cough out the water. He wasn't small and he wasn't being stupid. That's just the way the ocean is. The next day, the newspaper tried to interview me. I really didn't want to. Every time someone does something and they're in the paper for it, it feels like a celebration. It's not. Someone could have died. I understand that I may have done something great. Are you doing the aw shucks thing? Is this like a humble brag? I've been told that. I just don't want to celebrate it. The reporter said that I was doing a dis disservice because I was preventing the story from being inspiring. Do they need my soundbite? Can can't the story be enough? Am I an asshole? No, you're not. You're not an asshole at all. Just fuck. You do what you do, and then fuck them. Fuck them. Yeah, let them figure out what the fuck happened. I don't think you are. I don't think you're being an asshole at all. Uh, you know, if you're telling the truth and you're actually actually being honest right now, you didn't use your name, so you're not going to get any praise. I think what you do, I think what you did was great. Yeah, I don't need to fucking talk to you. I don't. We supposed to talk around about talk about how fucking great you are. I saw him go under, and I knew if I didn't get out there, if I didn't do something, nobody would. Um. No, I think, uh, you know, especially this day and age when Jesus Christ sucking a dick gets you a TV show. You actually save somebody from drowning. I mean, you'd probably get a fucking miniseries. Actually, is that better than a TV series? Well, most TV series don't get picked up. I don't know. Actually, you just get a pilot is what you really get. All right, Bill, you done? Yeah, I'm done. All right. My girlfriend wants to sell her panties online. How do you not read this? I don't, I don't, you guys, I don't give a shit if these are real or not. These are very entertaining. Hey, Billy Beef Farts. Uh, my, <laughs> I don't know what that means. My situation is exactly what it sounds like. Last week, my girlfriend of six years asked me if I think it's okay if she sells her used panties online. Gross. To some of those weirdo fetishes who enjoys that kind of shit. I said, sure. Thinking, what's the harm? Well, what if one of those guys is in those as a forensic expert? 
And that's also his fucking, you know, and that's how he kind of, be, you know, going to all those murder scenes. He started sniffing panties. Now he's afraid he's going to get caught, so he orders them online. And then after a while, the smell isn't enough, so he starts dusting the panties for prints. And next thing you know, he's standing at your door with a fucking meat cleaver and a heart on. And you answer the door, you know? He's got one hammer for one. He's got the axe for the other. And you show up. That's going through your fucking head. And then he's going in looking for your pantyless girlfriend. I think you're fucking nuts. Anyways, I said, sure. Thinking, what's the harm? We're both university students. She needs money. And what's the harm in milking these wackos for her old panties stained in clam juice? Dude, there's no way you love this woman. Um, here's the problem. She tells me that she needs to have pictures taken in these panties to, pro to prove to her potential clients that she did actually wear them. No, she doesn't. They want to smell them so they see her so they can eh, 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 and fucking rub them out. Um, when she told me this, I wasn't really, it wasn't really in a way that was asking for permission. Not that I would expect her to. Not that I would expect her to. This is how much the, the fucking American male has been beaten down that if they don't let the woman in their life do every fucking thing that she, every fucking d fucking idea that comes to her head, if they get in the way of it, they're crushing her dream. How about if, you, if you're a fucking, you're not even her boyfriend at this point, you're just an entourage member. Just going, hey, where are we going tonight? Oh, that's cool. Can you be a fellow, do you love this woman? Don't fucking let her do this. This is a dumb fucking idea. Don't you have dumb ideas? Doesn't she say to you every once in a while, hey, that's a stupid idea? And then afterwards, you're like, Jesus Christ, what was I thinking? Thank God you're in my life. This is when you need to step up, not stand down. She just, uh, dude, if she fucking does this, she's basically, she's in the porno industry. Her picture's going to be online on a panty sniffer fucking website. What, what, what fucking job do you get after that? And it, and it lives forever. And they'll wait. They'll wait till she's running for office. You know, if she starts her own fucking campaign to stop some fucking disease, right? And then that thing's going to come out. The old patty panty sniffer fucking photo is going to come out. Anyways, he says, but more of, of, anyways, not that I would expect her to. Dude, what if, what if, the, what if you dabbled into the porn industry? How the fuck you were going to do it with just a picture? Huh? I don't know. It's fucking crazy. Anyways, but more of a this would be part of the deal kind of way she brought it up to up to me. Immediately, I tell her that I have a huge problem with this. Well, all right then. All right then. You scared me there earlier. And she should not be doing it. She argues that, and I quote, I like the attention it gets. All right, dude. You know what this is the sound of? That is the sound of you backing up the dump truck that she's laying in the back of and dumping that bitch in the trash. Dude, this is not the mother of your kids. This, uh, uh, God bless her. I don't know who the fuck fucked her up. It's, it's over. Out. It's over, dude. It's out. And it's done. I, I don't even need to read the rest of this. He goes, like, what the fuck am I supposed to do here? I'll <laughs> That's what you're supposed to do. Keep my mouth shut and act like a cuckold or, or fight this thing to the bitter end. I know it's her body and she has the right to do anything with it. Shut the fuck up with that! Jesus Christ, these fucking feminists, you guys have turned into zombies. This isn't like a date rape situation here. I get, she does have the right to do it, but you're stopping her from getting into the porn industry. But it makes me feel like a complete tool. It should. Any input would be appreciated, Bill. I think I told you. I think I told you what you should do, dude. Just, yeah, yeah, you know what? This is the deal, okay? Even if she goes, you're going to break up with me? Well, then forget it. I won't do it. <laughs> I can't live without you. Fuck that. Whatever this is, this, this is, this is going to rear its ugly fucking head again. I like the attention it gets. She likes that kind of attention, okay? I'm telling you right now, dude. I'm telling you right now. Somebody that likes that kind of fucking of attention, it's not the attention that she can get within a fucking 
one-on-one monogamous relationship. All right. Now, whether she'll ever act on it and go even further, end up on a pole or blowing somebody behind a dumpster down at a Denny's after she ate some bad scrambled eggs. Who's to fucking know? All you know is that you're rolling the dice with, with half of your shit if you ever marry this kid, this, this kid, this woman and have kids. You know, and the kids are going to halfway fucking look like her. Oh, dude, I'm just flying down the road with this thing. Dumper, dude. Dumper. That's a deal breaker. I'm sorry. That's a fucking deal breaker. Done. Over. All right. Just be like, listen, uh, we've come to a fork in the road and uh, you want to be a model for a panty sniffing website, which I totally respect. And uh, I would like to be with somebody that I can trust. You know, who doesn't need the attention of some of the fucking weirdest people on the Internet. Okay. Good luck and thank you for playing now. Have you guys ever listened to the uh, the All Things Comedy podcast that I do, I do live with uh, Al Madrigal? Have you ever listened to those? Al Madrigal, okay, is a very busy man, so he might not have time to give you breakup advice. Al Madrigal has the greatest way how you break up with a woman that you if you're not living with this woman, the greatest way ever. And I'm giving him full credit here, and. He's already told the story on a podcast, so I don't feel like I'm overstepping my bounds here. This is the greatest way ever. This is what he would do. When he did, knew that he was going to break up with a woman, and, and, and uh, women can do this too. He would, and the, the woman was not living with him. He would gather up all of her shit that was in the apartment, and he would put it in a box. He'd call her up said, I need to come over there and talk to you. He'd come over with the box tell her it was over and then he would fucking leave and then there was nothing else there was no reason for her to come back and that was it that's what you need to do with her you need to pack up all her panties that she's going to be selling and modeling soon so she can become a fucking jerk off model okay and she's free to do that because it's her body snap 12 to 6 right is that what they do it's her fucking body. It's her right. She's an independent woman. Beyonce, the whole fucking thing. Feminism. Yeah, I'm doing this shit. Have fun, sweetheart. Right? She's going to go become a jerk off model. And if you stay with her, you will become a jerk off. And you don't want to do that because eventually it's going to breed resentment. And, uh, you know, dude, like, you, you, yeah, it's, it's going to be over. You can't marry her. You can't fucking marry her. It's done. It's fucking over. It's going to get out. Then your neighbor's going to find out. Then your neighbors are going to be jerking off to her. And then you're going to get a nickname. You know? It's, it, it's fucking over. God help you if your name starts with P. All right? Peter, Paul, any of that shit that, that's the alliteration with panty. I don't know what the fuck it's going to be, but you, it's, it's going to be a fucking nightmare. Jerk off Jerry. I don't know what the fuck it's going to be, but dude, you need to get out. Beep, beep, beep. Dump that bitch in the fucking trash. Over. Over. And so is this podcast. All right, go fuck yourselves. I'll talk to you on Thursday. Uh, Bill, my friend wants to be you. Dear Freckled Avenger, I have a problem. Ever since one of my buddies started listening to you, he started trying to act exactly like you. He started using a fake Boston accent. He changes his opinion, opinions according to the weekly podcast. I know because I listen to the show and I can hear his opinions change during our conversations on Tuesday morning. Also, he roots for all Boston sports teams now. The only thing he hasn't done is dye his fucking hair red. I don't want to be the asshole. <laughs> I don't want to be the asshole who calls him out and ruins the friendship. Could you please say a few words about this? Thanks and go fuck yourself. Well, listen, pal. You know, it's long been stated that I am the Taylor Swift of podcasting. All right. Little boys and girls look up to me. They want to be me. They play dress up. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to do with this fucking email. Whatever. He seems like he's enjoying it to another level. I like that he's a fan of all Boston teams right now. And I'm kind of enjoying that it's ruining your life. I actually wish I didn't read this. I wonder if he's listening right now and can actually tell that, your, that his own friend wrote this. This is fucking weird. I'm right in the middle of it. Um, is he going to get a fucking Patriots jersey that says Freckled Avenger on the back of it now? What kind of friend are you, man? Why, why can't you just let him have his fun? People need heroes. Why can't I be a hero to somebody? You know? 
you know what I want to do? I want that dude to come out to a comedy show and when he laughs at one of my jokes, I want to do that Taylor Swift thing and I'll look over in his direction and I'll just whisper, oh my God. Did you ever see that thing on 60 Minutes? When she, she would look into the upper deck when all these girls were screaming and she would get this weird look on her face and then she would whisper, oh my God. And it was just this totally calculated thing to try to make it appear that she was so blown away by their uh, show of affection. But what it really seemed like, the look on her face and then the fact she was saying, oh my God, she actually looked like, she looked like she was thinking like, I thought I already killed those little bastards. They're back again. Oh my God. I have to fucking poison them again. Um, well, there you go, everybody. I have my first um, <clears throat> single what is it? Single white male? Maybe we'll do a remake of the movie. Hey, you know what? In that movie, that chick was a redhead, right? Ah, Jesus. All right. Dutch girlfriend turns out to be a hooker. <laughs> oh, man. I feel bad for you, but I don't feel bad for you. Provided you didn't get an STD <clears throat> and you didn't knock her up. Oh, Jesus. All right. Let's put on some latex and wade into this one, everybody. Dear Bill, I live in the Netherlands. Um, I've been casually seeing this girl for a few months. Her family is rich. She's a pro fashion model and looks like Bridget Bardot. I've heard that name, but I can't picture the face. But with a name like that, right? She's got to be all stuck up huh? with her fucking perfect jeans. Anyways, yesterday she told me that for the past few months... She's been working as a whore. How fucked up am I that I actually find that sexy on some level? Um, high class on account of her looks and profession. 2,000 euros for three hours. 10,000 euros for 24 hours. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Some guy slobbering all over you for 10,000 hours. How quickly did you have to break up with this girl? I shouldn't make fun of this. This is terrible. Why, why is she tapping out? She's taking the easy way out here. You're already a model. Everybody's rich. Is she getting written out of the will? She's freaking out. Like, what do I do? I've been rich my whole life. No, I'm not going to be. Oh, I'll suck it. Uh, well, why don't I read? When I continue reading here, the usual clientele is rich corporate assholes and idiots who save up and think paying ludicrous amounts of money will get them a better orgasm. I have absolutely no interest in seeing this girl anymore. She's not going to be the mother of my children. Yeah, no, she's not. Um, yet she's only told four other people. If I split after her telling me this secret, she'll feel like a piece of trash and view me like some Puritan asswipe. My real reason for running away is you can't ask her to quit, and if she does, she'll only resent you for it and be at risk of relapsing any time. I got to get out. How do I do it? Well, well, what you have to do is stop being concerned about her feelings. What about your feelings? What about the fact that this woman is fucking around on you? What about the fact that she could give you an STD? What about the fact that she, that a relationship is built on trust and she has this giant fucking secret, arguably the biggest fucking secret you could have? You know? I'm not judging anybody in this fucking story. Because I've been you and I've been the whore. <laughs> I'm just saying. If I'm the whore... I ex I accept to get I expect to get fucking dumped. You know, there's plenty of man whores out there. You know, that's what happens. Um, yeah, dude. No, you got to stop thinking about like it's weird. Like this is what you have to do. You you have to get over the. F um, you have to be selfish in a fucking relationship to end up getting what you want in life. All right, and you have to have parameters, and you know to use the cliche. You know to make an omelet, you got to break some eggs. That's basically what you got to do. And this is not your fault. Um, I don't know what happened to her that made her choose this horrific fucking profession. But it's not your fault and it's not your job to fix it. And um, you said it in your last two sentences. I got to get out. How do I do it? Uh, so I guess your second to last sentence you said it. I got to get out. So you, just have, you don't have to be mean about it. You just have to say, listen, that's just a... Uh, unbelievable 
piece of information you just gave me that you were keeping from me. And, uh, oh, Jesus Christ, you just got, you got to use the, the cliche, you know, relationships built on trust. You know, I'm not judging you. Uh, I wish you weren't. I mean, you know what? There's a part of her that might want is probably, I don't even tell you this because you might run to this cause it's easier, but like, you know, I don't know. This is what I would do. I would break up with her and then also try to get her help to get her out of it. That's what I would do. And by getting her help, I would give her information where she can go. She needs to handle this on her own because you have feelings for her and you know that this isn't the mother of your kids. And if you just keep hanging around with her, you're going to get sucked back into it again. And now you have to trust somebody who lied to you at that fucking level. And um, that is just a... a fucking train wreck waiting to happen all right dude i would go get myself tested for everything on the under the fucking sun and um that's it that's it and she, if she cries i mean that's part of it and she brought it on herself it's not your fault all right and i'm not trying to be mean or whatever i mean i don't know what happened to her that made her do that type of shit but that's not your fault okay so why don't you go out there find a great girl who isn't a whore on the side and go Live your dreams, all right? And you know what? You're going to dump her, and it's going to hurt for a little while. Even though you knew it was the right thing to do, it's still supposed to hurt because you're a human being. You just got to push through that. Go to the gym, right? Have a couple of belts at the bar, but just stay in it. Stay in that pain, and you wait till that pain's gone, and then you fucking go out and try to find somebody else. In the meantime, you rub one out. All right. <laughs> Okay, ordain my wedding. Hey, Bill, I'm getting married in October. Yes, I'm getting in that line to lose half my shit. Well, hey, welcome to the club. So did I. Uh, strange request, uh, but would you ordain my wedding or at least be my best man? Uh, what does ordain mean? You want me to go, dude, we are gathered here today to join these two people in holy matrimony under the eyes of God in front of the church. Next to you, you fucking busted aspirated tube there. Um, yeah, what kind of a man invites another man to a fucking wedding? Don't ever do that to me again, okay? I I'll look past it one time. Why the fuck would I want to go to a wedding? You know, actually, you know what? The reason why I didn't like to go to weddings in the past because it put pressure on my relationship. Now that we finally got married, I, there's no fucking pressure. We're going to a married, uh, married. We're going to a wedding coming up, and I'm fucking psyched. You know, <laughs> I already did it. I don't have a fucking problem. Me sitting there eating fucking hors d'oeuvres, dancing to the locomotion, whatever the fuck it is, just getting hammered. I'm going to have a great fucking time for the first time. You know what? I might do you. Where is your wedding? If I got a gig in the area, if I got a gig in the area, I, I might come over there. Tell me where it is. Who knows? Stranger things have happened. But then if I do yours, then I got to do everybody's, right? Can I sell my DVDs at the end of your wedding? <laughs> Try out a couple of bits. Um, anyways, MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, creates toughest tongue twister ever. Dear Bill Literate. <laughs> oh, you fucking cunt. That's a great one. Um, thanks for the show. You are amazing. Look at how this person is buttering me up to make a complete ass of me. We all love the podcast, and by far the best part is listening to you attempt to read spots and emails. Yeah, that's because you're not happy or confident in your own life, that you have to watch somebody else fail. That's what it is. What does that say about That says more about you than it says about me, all right? You guys are my real friends. Um, MIT recently created what they think is the toughest tongue twister ever. Give it a shot. This is what they're doing at MIT? I couldn't get accepted there? If you can say it ten times fast, you get a prize. Oh, go fuck yourself. What am I, a goddamn dancing monkey? What is it? Pad kid? That's not even a, a... That doesn't even make sense. Pad kid poured curd pulled cod. Shouldn't it be that kid? That kid poured curd pulled cod? Pad kid poured curd pulled cod. Ah, go fuck yourself. Is this, am I actually saying something dirty and I can't hear it right now? I don't fucking know. All right, for those of you who have absolutely no life, if you want to fucking try and do that, uh, you know, have fun. Okay, book recommendation. Um, what are we up to here? Oh, hour and seven minutes. Beautiful. Hey, hey, Billy Burgundy Balls. 
Heard you mention that No Country for Old Men is one of your favorite movies. Mine too. If you're looking for any good books to read, I highly recommend anything by Carmack McCarthy. I hope I said that right. Carmack, C-A-R-M-A-C, one word. McCarthy, M-A, lowercase C-A-R-T-H-Y. Author of No Country, Carmack McCarthy. Oh, he wrote that. I actually want to read the book, No Country for Old Men. Uh, he said, I read said book after I saw the movie, and even though they did a great job with the movie, the book was still incredible. Everything I've read from him was top-notch. The Border Trilogy probably being my favorite. If you hate easy-going, light-on-your-loafer stories with predictable happy endings, you'll dig his shit. Come to Indianapolis and go fuck yourself, sir. I came there last April. Um, all right, you know what? I will check that out. I like it. I might, I might, you know what I'm going to do? You know what I'm going to do, people? I'm going to go to my website, click on the podcast page, and then I'm going to click on the Amazon banner in the corner, which is going to take me to Amazon. Because when you go to Amazon through us here at BillBird.com, um, it doesn't cost you any extra money. It costs you an extra click of your finger. And, um, well, you know, whatever. They, you, you know, you buy whatever you buy, and then they kick it back to me. They give me a little bit of a kickback. That's what they do. And then I take that money, and I give it to a charity that isn't corrupt, hopefully. Like the last one I was giving to, which evidently people say is not exactly on the up and up. So now i got to switch it to something else. <sighs> what kind of a fucking person does it? Starts a goddamn charity, gets you all fucking excited about it. You think you're making a, you know. Uh, it's right up there with that pink lady, man. She's got her day and fucking something is coming. I'd like to think. I would like to think. Okay. So anyways, um, I guess that's the podcast for this week.